Hi everyone, thanks for watching today's video. Today I'm going to talk about a very serious and important condition called liver cirrhosis. To understand what cirrhosis is, it's very important to understand how the body repairs itself following wear and tear. Our body is like a machine, it's like every machine, wear and tear takes place and how does our body repair it. I'm sure some of you who would have seen my previous videos or from your own knowledge know that the body is made out of building blocks. These building blocks are put together to form different parts of our body. These are called cells. In the middle of these is a brain called the nucleus, which works everything inside the cell. All are controlled by the nucleus. There are only few cells in the body which do not have a nucleus, whereas most living cells in the body have got a nucleus. These, all these cells, whether they are in our eyes or in our skin or our liver or pancreas or spleen or intestine, wherever they are, they look different in different parts of our body. However, these are the main building blocks in every organ in our body. They all come with a little lifespan. So some will live a few days, some will live a bit longer, some will live weeks, some will live for a long time, like months, and some will live for the rest of our life. Like the brain cells will be there with us forever. If they die, they cannot be replaced. So when the cell dies after living its life, it is replaced by a normal cell, which looks exactly the same what it was before it died. This is what body does. Body repairs itself like with like. However, sometimes what happens that there is too much damage on the in that part of the body. For example, our skin, if we cut ourselves quite deeply or have a deep burn, the cells cannot be replaced like with like because there is too much damage or damage is happening very quickly and over a long period of time, which means the body hasn't got time or the capacity or the capability of replacing it like with like. And in that case, it replaces it with scar tissue. And this scar tissue is our main repair tissue in our body. So when we hurt our arm or leg with a deep cut or something, it is replaced by scar tissue. It does not look the same, does not do the same, does not work the same as our normal tissue. So in this diagram, I've tried showing wear and tear in the liver. So that's our liver, second biggest organ in our body. The red blocks I've shown are normal cells and the green ones I've shown as scar tissue. So liver cells, which look normal, is all going okay and they are repaired like with like. However, if the injury to the liver or something which is damaging the liver, whether they are natural causes or they are unnatural causes, the liver will try and repair itself. Liver is an amazing organ in our body. If you remove two thirds of the liver, surgically or by damage or whatever reason, the rest of it will be enough to keep our functions of the liver going normally. So it has got incredible capacity and also it has got incredible power of repair. However, some damages to the liver, even this amazing organ can't keep up with. So if the damage is going on for a long period of time, not days, not weeks, not months, but for years, and if the damage is so severe that it's happening so rapidly that liver cells are dying quicker than they can repair themselves or replace themselves, then they start getting replaced by scar tissue. So liver will start having areas which are full of scar tissue. So as you can see in these pictures, normal liver becomes fatty liver because of damage and eventually scarring takes place and it becomes a lumpy liver due to cirrhosis. Next thing to discuss is what are the commonest causes of damage to the liver which can result in scarring of the liver which is called fibrosis and this fibrosis when it is extreme has gone beyond repair is irreversible cannot be brought back to normal is called cirrhosis. There are many different things that can cause irreversible damage to the liver and result in cirrhosis. I've named just a few. Excessive alcohol intake over a long period of time is one of the commonest causes of cirrhosis. Please do remember this is irreversible liver disease. If cirrhosis sets in, it, the liver cannot go back to normal. Hepatitis B and C 
and other new forms of hepatitis coming out, they can cause cirrhosis, this, this infection of the liver with a virus. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which I discussed in my previous videos to do watch it, very common cause of again, if it's not controlled, will lead to cirrhosis. Condition called primary biliary cirrhosis, which is an autoimmune condition in which our own cells are attacking our liver, can happen with conditions like ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, etc. And that can give rise to cirrhosis. Hemochromatosis, too much iron in our body. Certain drugs can cause severe damage to the liver and will ultimately result in cirrhosis. There are many more causes of cirrhosis, which are uncommon causes. I have not gone into listing those causes. The important thing to understand is cirrhosis can be caused by many, many different causes. Some of the causes are man-made causes, which means they can be stopped or prevented, like infections can be prevented. This can be stopped or reversed. However, there are certain conditions in which, over which we have very little control and uh, those conditions cannot necessarily be avoided. So what are the symptoms that patient gets following cirrhosis? So very early cirrhosis, or even when it is getting a bit advanced, have got very few symptoms, either no symptoms at all in very early cirrhosis. And when the symptoms start, they are very minor symptoms and the patient don't think of it, carry on with the lifestyle like excessive alcohol, eating unhealthy food, not doing exercise, etc., etc., which can give rise to fatty liver disease and subsequently to cirrhosis, is they start feeling a bit tired, feel a bit sick. They start losing weight, especially they start losing muscle from their arms and their legs, so they get very sticky arm, very sticky legs. Red patches start appearing on their palms of their hands, so on this side of the hand, start getting red patches all over the hand. Hands start uh, shaking a little bit. They get what we call spider nevi, especially above the waist. So little blood vessels appear, which look like little spiders. So in the middle, there'll be a blood vessel, and little blood vessels going away from the middle one. It looks like a spider. And you can see it on the skin, on the chest, on the torso, on the tummy, on the back, etc. And they are showing that the cirrhosis is now progressing, is getting worse. As disease progresses and gets worse, and at this stage, the outlook is very, very poor on these patients when they start getting jaundiced, which is, from my previous video, you know, is yellow discoloration of the skin and the eyes. Poo becomes very pale and the urine becomes very dark. They start getting bruising very easily and they bleed because they get abnormal blood vessels, very dilated blood vessels in the esophagus, in the stomach and other part of the intestine, which can bleed quite heavily. And the bleeding can be life-threatening bleeding. They get swollen legs called edema because they are retaining fluid in their body and they can't get rid of that fluid from the body. The tummy gets swollen and they get a very big belly, which is full of fluid called ascites. And when the disease is very, very advanced, they start getting confusion, delusions, even unconsciousness, coma, and that is called hepatic encephalopathy. These patients are coming to end-stage liver disease and their outlook is extremely poor. So how is cirrhosis diagnosed? Obviously, from the history, the patient will come to the doctor looking jaundiced, like very thin arms, very thin legs, losing weight quite a lot not feeling very hungry and obviously the doctor will order some tests simple blood tests like liver function tests which I've discussed in one of my previous videos so do watch it will show that there is signs of liver not functioning normally and also might also show signs of viral infection in the blood with hepatitis scans like ultrasound scans CT MRI MRE different scans which can be done to diagnose cirrhosis and the diagnosis can be done very confidently with these scans. Some patients will require liver biopsy. However, most patients can be diagnosed just from the blood test and the scans that are done. So what is the treatment for cirrhosis? Uh, prevention is always better than cure. Things that can cause cirrhosis like excessive alcohol intake, drugs which can cause liver damage and excess, 
hepatitis, the way hepatitis is spread, avoiding those things, uh, because hepatitis B and C are spread by bodily fluids and spread by from blood given from infected person to a non-infected person. If that can be avoided, that is the best treatment for cirrhosis. If the cirrhosis is already developed, then treatment for hepatitis by medications and taking away alcohol completely will hopefully stop it from getting worse. However, once the cirrhosis is set in, then there is no reversibility. It cannot be changed back to normal liver. And the only thing that can be done is symptom control. Whether the symptom control is for swelling of the legs or swelling of the tummy to get rid of the fluid from the body, avoiding encephalopathy, controlling the diet, giving healthy exercise or healthy eating, or controlling the bleeding, from the blood vessels or the varices from my esophagus and the stomach, which you can view in one of my old videos on portal hypertension. Only that can be done to control the symptoms. There is no cure at that stage for cirrhosis. The disease has gone too far and beyond cure. The only way of getting rid of the diseased liver is liver transplant. Not every patient who gets cirrhosis is a suitable candidate for liver transplant there are only few livers available out there for transplant. Donor livers are very few. The waiting time for patients on liver transplant list is extremely long, sometimes waiting for years and years to get a suitable liver. I hope you found this video informative. I'm sorry it was a bit dark and gloomy. However, it is a serious condition which should be taken very, very seriously. If you like this video, then please do give us a thumbs up. And remember to subscribe and I'll see you very soon. Thanks for watching.